guys welcome back um that intro just kills me <laughs> i just put it onto the first video um i edited it onto the first video <laughs> it's just uh it's so ridiculous on so many levels and that's why it's amazing that's why it's amazing uh so you're welcome for that uh amazing piece of of uh, cinematic <laughs> cinematographic art um yeah okay so i hope you guys have a good had a good break um i did i was editing videos so now i'm back ready to talk about some chemistry so um we need to come back and talk about something that we briefly mentioned in the very beginning um which are polyprotic acids i know that this is was just on your mind and you think to yourself man what about polyprotic acids? Why haven't we discussed those in more detail? Well, that's what we're doing right now. Okay, polyprotic acids. Um, how do we treat, first of all, how do we treat the first hydrogen that comes off? And also, how do we treat the second hydrogen that comes off? If we have something like H2SO3, So this is sulfurous acid, not sulfuric acid. Um, H2SO3 has uh, two protons, so it's a diprotic, salt, uh, diprotic acid. So we can lose the first proton, and this becomes HSO3 minus. And we have a Ka1 here that's equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2, okay? Um, if we take that same HSO3 minus that we created up here, we can lose the second acidic proton and we can form H plus plus SO3 minus, so sulfite, and this becomes Ka2 is equal to 6.4 times 10 to the minus 8. Now compare the two Ka's in this case. The two Ka's, um, first, first of all, Ka1 is huge in comparison to Ka2. It's over six, it's, it's about a million times greater than Ka2. Um, so the second Ka, or the second proton, is much weaker. Okay, and this is true for all polyprotic acids. The second proton is always much, much weaker than the first. Uh, and this has to do with some things. Um, first of all, the negative char negatively charged molecule that we're making here, this bisulfite, um, this bisulfite it wants to hold on to the hydrogen much more hard because hydrogen is a positive, uh, it's a proton, right? So um, just due to electromagnetic forces involved, it's going to want to hold on to that hydrogen a little bit harder, and it's going to keep the hydrogen from leaving the molecule. Okay, so uh, from just that perspective, um, the second hydrogen should be harder to take off. Okay, there is a table in 16.10 um, that lists all of the polyprotes, or lists many polyprotes. And uh, a polyprote that's my cutesy way of saying polyprotic. <laughs> uh, I think it's funny, polyprot. Anyway, um, it lists all of the different polyprotes. Uh, I'm going to throw a few up here that I think are useful or interesting to know. We have H2SO4, so sulfuric acid. Okay, The Ka1 is strong. The first proton is very strong. So it does not have a Ka associated with it. It's not an equilibrium expression. Ka2 is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, and then um, I'm going to write Ka3 over here because not just uh, diprotic acids, but we can have triprotic and um, I don't know if we can have quaprotic or terprotic. I'm sure we can. Uh, I just don't know of any off the top of my head. Okay, then we have phosphonic acid, H3PO4. OK, 
Okay, H3, H3PO4, the first hydrogen is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Second hydrogen is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 8. And the third hydrogen is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13. Okay, so that third hydrogen is way weak in comparison to the first hydrogen. Uh, how about carbonic acid? Carbonic acid is a super important acid for our biochemistry. Um, there is a buffer system between bicarbonate and carbonic acid that's happening within your body to actually regulate the pH in your body to around 7.2 to 7.3. Um, or maybe it's 7.3 to 7.4. Anyway, if uh, this gets messed up at all and you start to go into what's called acidosis, uh, it can really disrupt biological function and uh, you can die from this rather quickly. So thank you, bicarbonate <laughs> uh, and carbonic acid. Um, the first hydrogen comes off with a Ka of 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7. And the second is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. Okay, so again, uh, second, second proton is much weaker than the first. Let's look at some Lewis structures for how these look. For first of all, sulfuric acid, we have S, O, double bond, O, 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 and H, and H, okay? These are the two um, acidic protons that come off, right? Phosphoric acid, we have P, double bond, O, OH, OH, and OH. These are the three acidic hydrogens that come off. And for carbonic acid, we have carbon, double bond O, OH, OH, okay? So you guys are sensing a theme here, right? Um, the, all of these have a central atom that is double bonded to oxygen in some way and then has OH groups coming off of the side. Okay, and these are a special type of acid that we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, first of all, let's, let's, let's get into the, the meat and potatoes more or less of how to deal with a polyprotic acid in solution. Um, the, the idea is that we want to treat polyprotics or polyprotes as if only the first hydrogen contributes to H3O plus in general. Okay, treat it as only as if only the first one contributes to the hydrogen. Okay, and um, this is actually due to Le Chatelier's principle. Right, it's due to Le Chatelier's principle. If we have, um, for example, H2SO4, and we react H2SO4 with some water. This is a full reaction. It's going to go all the way to the side and we're going to produce H3O plus and HSO4 minus. Say, for example, if we started off with 1.0 molar, then we would end up with 1.0 molar of H3O plus and 1.0 molar of HSO4 minus. Now, for the second hydrogen, that's the first hydrogen. What about the second hydrogen? If we take H HSO4 minus, and remember, we have 1.0 moles of it, molar of this, and we again react it with H2O to form um, SO4 two minus and H3O plus. The H3O plus initial is already at 1.0 molar. Okay, so the 1.0 molar HSO4 wants to shift the reactant in this direction. Right? It wants to shift the reaction to the <laughs> to the right, not to the left. Oh shits. Mm, whoops. Shifts. Yeah, that's an interesting problem. 
<laughs> Sorry. Shift's reaction to the right. Okay. Um, however, this being at 1.0 molar shifts the reaction to the left. Let's not make the same mistake twice to the left. Okay. And because of this, this reaction is not going to move at all. Reaction doesn't move. It stays exactly where it is. We end up with 1.0 moles of HSO4 minus and 1.0 moles of H3O plus at equilibrium. And therefore, only the first hydrogen uh, contributes to the H3O plus concentration. Okay, so even though it's polyprotic, um, treat this uh, usually when you make any solution of a polyprotic, you want to treat it as if only the first hydrogen matters. Now, there is an example, and there is an exception. Very dilute solutions. of H2SO4 are um, actually affected by the second proton, okay? And uh, there's an example of this in the book, uh, 16.18, okay? So check out that example. It shows you that when you have a super, super, super dilute solution of H2SO4, actually it's not that dilute. Um, yeah, it's just somewhat, it's, it's pretty dilute, but it's not like super dilute. Anyway, um, if you go through and you look at that, you'll see that the second hydrogen actually contributes a little bit to the pH. Okay, I'm um, sorry, I've lost my place a little bit here. You can probably hear me shuffling around my notes. Um, yeah. Let's go back to one of the initial uh, questions we had was how do you uh, determine the strength of an acid? Now, we, d we figured out that we can determine the strength of an acid using the pH of the solution or the Ka um, the Ka of the acid if it's a weak acid, okay. Um, but I want to I want to revisit this because I want to start to answer the question of why are some acids strong and other acids weak, okay. Not just the how to determine the strength of an acid, but why are certain acids strong and why are certain acids weak. Um, we have two categories of acids, okay? We have binary acids, okay? Binary acids are things that look like H attached to Y. For example, HCl, HBr, HF etc etc and we also have something called an oxy acid oxy acids are not to be confused with oxymorons um, they are quite a bit different things sound same but they're different oxy acids um, are things like when you have an H attached to an O that's attached to some Y group that is then attached to other things Okay, for example, um, H2SO4, um, HClO4, etc., etc. Okay, these are all oxy acids. And so we need to uh, talk about each of them separately because their strength is dependent on their structure. Okay, for binary acids, what determines the strength and why are certain binary acids strong and others are weak. 
Okay, number one, the bond between H and Y must be polar. Okay, if we have an H and it's going to have a partial positive connected to a Y with a partial negative. Um, and if we look at the electron density here, right, if we have H connected to Y, um, the electron density is going to be almost entirely um, centralized around this more electronegative component. And because of this, we end up having a dipole, right? So we have a polar bond. Um, if we have something like H or uh, hydrogen lithium, right? Um, in this case, you actually end up with a really weird solution where hydrogen gets the partial negative, lithium gets the partial positive, and this ends up being not acidic, not acidic at all. Um, if we have a bond between hydrogen and carbon, this is nonpolar. There's not enough of a difference in, in electronegativity between the two to make this a polar bond, so this is not acidic. If we look at something like HF, however, there is a partial positive and a partial negative. Uh, we have a polar bond here, and it's pointing towards, uh, the positive is pointing towards the hydrogen, and this makes it acidic. Okay, so those are the, the three different ways that we can look at this, and of course, only when we have a polar bond with the hydrogen uh, being mostly or being the positive portion do we have an acidic structure Okay, the next um, I guess the next piece of whether or not this is a strong acid or not is that the bond must be weak The bond between the hydrogen and the Y substance must be weak Okay, and this is true for strong acids. And it must be strong for weak acids. Okay, so it's weak for strong acids and strong for weak acids. And that makes sense, right? The bond, if the bond is weak, then it's very likely that the hydrogen will get lost. If it's very strong, then it's not so likely that the hydrogen will uh, leave the safety and confine of the molecule itself. Okay, for example, um, let's look at a couple different binary acids. And we'll look at the bond energy in kilojoules per mole. And we'll look at the type of acid. So if we have HF, this bond energy is super high, 565 kilojoules per mole. This is a very strong bond. And that necessarily means that the, um, the acid, HF acid, is a weak acid. Uh, if we look at something like HCl, on the other hand, the bond strength is 4.31, or 431, excuse me, 431 kilojoules per mole. And this is now a strong acid. Okay, it completely disassociates in water. And if we look going down the list, uh, let's look at HBr. Um, this has a bond energy of 364, and this is also a strong acid. Okay, and this HF again is weak because the bond strength is just too large. So for binary acids, both the bond strength and the polarity play a role in determining whether or not something is a um, is a strong or a weak acid. Okay, so that's binary acids. What about oxy acids? Oxy acids have this general structure, H O Y, and the Y can be connected to any number of things. Um, the two factors that are affecting the acid strength for an oxy acid are number one, the electronegativity of Y. Okay, 
what's your negativity of y so how much y wants to gobble up the electrons and number two the number of oxygen atoms bound to y okay so the more um yeah we'll, we'll get to that in a second okay let's go through number one first the electronegativity of y Electronegativity of Y. Um, let's make a, let's see here. Let's do a bunch of different Ys. Okay, so we'll have different Y groups here. And then we'll have the Y electronegativity. And then over here, we'll have the Ka of the hydrogen associated with this acid. So if we have H, bonded to O, bonded to iodide. This has an electronegativity of 2.5, iodide does. And the corresponding Ka for this acid would be 2.3 times 10 to the minus 11. Next, if we go to HOBr, the electronegativity of bromine is 2.8, slightly increased. And we see that the Ka is 2.0 times 10 to the minus 9. Next, if we go to uh, chlorine as our Y group, in this case, the electronegativity jumps up to 3.0, and we have a Ka of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay, So we see, as we move down, the acid strength is increasing. So the, the strength of the acid increases with the electronegativity of Y. And this just has to do with the fact that the more electronegative Y is, the more it's going to gobble up the electrons from the oxygen, right? And the more it gobbles up the electrons from the oxygen, the more the oxygen is going to want to gobble up the electrons from the hydrogen. And that just makes that bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen that much weaker, and it allows the hydrogen to escape more readily. Therefore, it is more acidic, okay? So the more electronegative Y... more acidic uh, the, the substance is. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to consider. Second thing, or second reason, why certain oxy acids are strong or weak has to do with the number of oxygen atoms bound to Y. Okay, the number of oxygen atoms bound to Y uh, this also affects and this has to do again with the fact that electrons are going to be gobbled up away from the hydrogen so if we have some hydrogen that's attached to an oxygen that's attached to Y and then say we have a bunch of oxygens here um, I guess these don't really need to be double bonds oops okay something like that um, these oxygens are all going to pull electrons away from Y. Okay? And because they're pulling stuff away from Y, Y is going to want to pull electrons away from the oxygen. And then, therefore, the oxygen is going to want to pull electrons away from the hydrogen. You can see how it's kind of like a trickle-down effect um, where the guy on the bottom, poor little hydrogen on the bottom, just gets completely abused and all of his electrons get taken away from him. So if you look at a structure like HClO4, we have H attached to oxygen, attached to um, chlorine, which is double bond oxygen all around. Oops. Okay, so this has three oxygens attached to the Y, and this is a very strong acid. Next, if we look at HClO2, this looks something like H bonded to O, bonded to chlorine, bonded to oxygen. Okay, so it has one oxygen group bound to Y. And this Ka is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2. And if we have something like HClO, um, this looks like HOCl. So this has zero oxygens 
Uh, this is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. So you can see as less oxygens there are, the acid strength actually decreases. And this again has to do with the fact that the oxygens are pulling electrons away from this Y, which are then pulling electrons away from the oxygen. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the hydrogen and oxygen bond is weaker, and therefore the acid itself is stronger. So if we have an increase in the number of oxygens bound to Y, we have an increase in the strength of the acid. Okay, so the more acidic something is, the more uh, the more high, or excuse me, the more oxygens that are bound to Y, the more acidic something is. Okay, I think I'm going to end it there for today. I have one more um, thing to go through, but I think I will leave that until next time. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave that until Friday. We'll cover that Friday. Uh, so we will finish up chapter 16 on Friday, and we'll get into chapter 17 next week. Um, I plan on having a Zoom meeting with all of you, uh, kind of like a, a, a coffee social, bring your own BYOC, bring your own coffee. Um, just kind of like to, to talk to you guys and to see you guys again. I haven't seen you in, you know, many months and it would be, it'd be nice to kind of have a little, uh, little gathering. So, um, look for that on Canvas. I think I'm going to plan that for Friday. Um, but I will put something up on Canvas to let you know exactly when. And it would it would be during cl normal class period time. So probably Friday from 10.10 uh, 10 to 11.05. Um, we'll probably just meet and, and talk and have some coffee and some tea. And uh, maybe we'll discuss the final. Because I've gotten a couple emails from people uh, who are concerned about the final. Um, we're not really concerned, but just like hoping to be able to past the final <laughs> or do well in the final uh which i appreciate the, that they care um so yeah i mean we can talk about the final we can talk about what we're going to be able to cover in the class you know we can talk about normal things that we would we would talk about in the class that uh, we just haven't been able to do since we are stuck in our own homes <laughs> um yeah so i will put up an announcement on canvas uh, so look for that in the coming days. But yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys on Friday. And uh, I hope you have a great day. If it's nice where you are, if it's beautiful outside, make sure to get outside and to experience that vitamin D. All right. McDonald's.